Hello, I'm Matthew Somville. Um, I don't eat any slides um, because I didn't have time to do any. But they were very, they were very good, Rachel. Um, take it off because everyone will put me off. Thank you. Um, so by day I work for a charity uh, making websites like Fix My Street and um, they work for you, things that use lots of open data. Uh, but I'm a big art enthusiast uh, and I go to theatre a lot and I set up a website called Theatricalia, which is meant to be a big archive of productions and things. Um, and I set it up sort of, there are many reasons, but one was sort of about archiving and ghettoization and open data in general in the arts. Um, and I thought the best way to talk, as Rachel said, about um, digital innovation doesn't have to be about something new. It can be stuff that people have said for years, but if no one ever does it, it's still pretty innovative. Um, and so I thought I'd just leave, but I'd just give you three examples of what I mean. So firstly, who remembers GeoCities? Yeah, anybody had a GeoCities site back in like the late 90s? Mm -hmm. and so um, GeoCities was in its time the third most popular website in the world after AOL and Yahoo. Uh, remember them? Um, and um, it had millions, literally millions of people who were just, I don't know, putting up poems, photos, lots of knots and lots of art. As, um, and then at the end of October 2009, Yahoo turned it off. Just like that, um, they just sort of deleted everything that was ever been there. Um, Jason Scott, who was the head of the archive team, who took it upon himself to try and save as much of it as possible, um, said GeoCities was the largest self-created folk art collection in the history of the world, uh, which is true. Um, so it's just like, I mean, you can say lots of it, most of it was animated GIFs and, and, and complete rubbish, but who am I to judge what people decided to do given the tools available? Um, and that just sort of putting everything in some corporation's hands who you don't have any control over and then one day, I mean, you say that, but you, you think that all oh, that could never happen now, but what happens when Rupert Murdoch decides MySpace isn't making any money? Which I believe it isn't. Um, so my second one is much closer to home, much smaller and much better, but still, I mean, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So edfringe.com. It's a very nice website, you can book your tickets for everything at the Fringe, um, but if you go on it now, last year doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's, it, it doesn't have all the links I did last year in my blog about what I went to see, they're all broken. None of them work, they're, it's all gone, it's just all about the now and the selling the tickets. And I think that's a bit of a shame, I mean, don't get me wrong, Ed Fringe is brilliant in that they still have the data from last year available through an API and you can get a copy and that's brilliant, much better than lots of other people. But still, I feel when you put something on the website, or on the internet in fact, it's not just, you're not just on your own, you're not just a ghetto selling tickets for your thing, you, you basically have a moral obligation to the world, <laughs> uh, if I don't put it too bluntly, to think, <laughs> to, to think about what you're doing because it's like, um, as Tim Berners-Lee said in a different millennium in the language of that time, cool you our eyes don't change, uh, by which he meant I, I know he's a bit of a geek, he only set it up. Um, the, um, but he meant keep things as they were. You know, you have, once something's there, people might link to it. That's the point of the internet, links basically. And then you've lost control. You mean, you have the control, you can take it down, but that's ruined it for everybody else. Um, and my third example is the um, Arts Humanities Data Service, which is a, was a nice little, is and was a nice website where people could put collections in. Um, and one collection they put in was the Birmingham Rep 1913 to 1971. That's the time when Laurence Olivier acted there, and I'm, I live in Birmingham now. Um, and they lost their funding, um, and so the website disappeared. And so now if I hadn't taken a copy without permission of the data, um, it would be lost to the entire world. So I, I now have on my website the Birmingham Rep 1913 to 1971 archive of every production they put on, and I believe that's the only copy now available. Um, and I shouldn't have to do that. Uh, so my point basically about innovation is that people should think about how what they do isn't just about them, how it affects everyone, and how if people work together and do things in open ways and open data, then um, the world can be a much better place. Thank you.